Hi, I'm Matt from Code Tech and Tutorials. Today I want to talk about something that a lot of coders should really think about or keep in mind, or anyone even preparing to be a coder. For some of us it comes naturally. For the rest, well, we have to push ourselves. We have to study extra hard. We have to think about things from angles we're not used to thinking about. I'm going to talk about four tips to avoid burnout, or tips to keep going. These are tips I use. This list is subjective, incredibly subjective. What works for me might not work for you, but I can say for sure that these four things have definitely helped me in keeping my mindset straight and keeping me learning code, studying the code. Because that's pretty much what I do every day. And it is true that there are some days I don't particularly feel like it at first, but we'll address that. So one of the main things, one of the very, very main things is you need to set small goals for yourself. Sure, you want larger overarching goals, and we'll get to that. But what small goals do is they leave you something attainable. You can sit down, start working on your project, and think, I just want this little tiny thing to be better or look better. And if I can just obtain that, then I'll be set. You'll, you'll feel good about it. So what these small goals do is they allow you to feel good and actually get some code done. Because it's actually pretty important to code frequently, even if you don't feel like it. have to code every day even if it's something small and this isn't like 100% set in stone maybe you have a holiday and you just physically can't actually sit down to code because maybe you're with family the whole time and distracted or who knows if you just have free time and you're just sitting around not doing a whole lot yeah you should absolutely be coding and if you can't bring yourself to maybe these tips will help all right one of the things I do when I'm really stuck and I don't feel like doing anything and I don't even feel like working on maybe on a project or something, is I go look at job listings. Now the reason I do this is mainly for the list of technologies that are actually in use these days. You hear the same things over and over on most forums. React, Vue, JS, Python, uh, is there even anything else in the world? If you look at like YouTube coding videos, they're probably, you wouldn't know that there are any, is anything else in the world other than those like four things. But if you look at job listings, they've got 20 to 30 technologies listed sometime of things that they actually use in production. So what I like to do is just go through those one by one and see which ones I don't know. And I take a note of the ones I have no idea what they are. And I go look it up and study it for a little bit. And sometimes inspiration will strike. I'll see something and I'm like, oh, I can do something cool with this. And I'll have that in the back of my mind and maybe I might try to implement it later. But it kind of gets you out of the pattern of not looking at anything because you're kind of broadening your, your scope a little bit. One of the things that tends to happen after a while when you're programming for a long time is you get stuck in this rut of like doing the same thing. So when looking at this big list of technologies and research and all the ones you're not uh, real keen on will kind of broaden your knowledge for a bit and help you get creative in other areas. That way when you do come back to the main thing you focus on all the time, at least you have a little bit more perspective and that can make a big difference and keep it more exciting, at least it does for me. And another thing that's really big is, is to have a personal passion project. And if you don't have one, make one and let it change as frequently as it feels like. And that's totally up to you. As soon as your first one falls out of your favor and you don't feel like working on it anymore, make a new one, fix something, find something in the world that could be better, find a find a tool that you need that you would love but just can't find and start building it. It doesn't have to be good. You don't even have to finish it. You just need to have something to work on and you need to explore. Maybe you'll finish it. Maybe it will get good. But in any case, most learning comes from failure. So even if you try to do something and you find out, oh, this is too big. I can't do all this. This is too much work. You'll learn a lot. And then when you go look at other technologies and see how they work, things will start tying together. You just got to keep doing this over and over. It's a lot of repetition. It takes a really long time to become a good programmer. Programming, it needs a lot of discrete math. And, well, not all, you know, not all programming. If you're just like making web pages, you don't really need a whole lot of discrete math. But if you're doing games and 3D and trying to make things as efficient as possible without the memories moving around, it does take a lot of discrete math. So that's the big four things. I'm going to end it here. So number one, small goals for you. 
do not compare yourself to other people's small goals. Set your own personal small goals, something you can attain. So only compare to yourself and set those small goals. And program every day, pretty much no matter what. Just work on one of these little small goals. And look at job listings when you're stuck. And just look at technologies, get ideas, just start broadening things if you're feeling too pigeonholed and can't take it anymore. Fourth, last but not least, have your own personal passion project and let it change as often as it needs to just to keep you going. Just, you, you probably know as well as I do that if you're into technology and, and programming, things, you know, you kind of, if you're working on a big project, you kind of get stuck after a while. So I think this personal passion project is the biggest one, or at least it has been for me, and the other things just kind of fold into that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helps you in some way. Hope it maybe helps you get out of a rut if you're in a rut or it just helps you keep going or use it as motivation to keep programming. The world does need good programmers, as you can tell by the large amount of crashing software and bugs in production. You are needed. If you can keep getting better every day, you can make a difference. I'm trying to just be motivational here. All right, Matt from Code Second Tutorials over and out. Appreciate all you guys that do watch my channel, it does mean a lot. I'm, I'm still a little uh, struck with how fast it's growing and it's, uh, I just get a little flustered when I even talk about it. So it just means so much to me. I, I don't even know how to express it. So thank you guys. Please let me know down below what you think. My Patreon does have some voting open for what I will definitely work on. Just need some people over there to actually vote. And you can say, hey, Matt, work on this video, do it. But otherwise, uh, you know, the comments are always with a bit of grain of salt because they're public YouTube comments. Uh, so I don't really go off of any final thing there. But on Patreon, I will because that's like, you know, actually paid supporters. So appreciate you guys. Peace out.